wanted to show you guys what I do when I actually get my makeup done for the day. It's gonna be like my everyday go-to makeup. Just gonna be chatting. Let's go ahead and get into this face. First things first, I always like to brush out my wig first because I feel like it just makes me feel more put together when my wig feels a little more put together, if that makes sense. Jehovah oil. This is usually for just natural hair. I find that when you take just a little bit, maybe like a dime size amount on your hand like that, and then just run it through. Guys, this is synthetic hair. I would never think that putting something a little oily like a Jehovah oil would do anything good for this, but guys, this is a hack. Just doing that, just took away so much of the poofiness and it made it lay. I have been, I've been busy. I tend to keep my relationship off of social media though. And I do that purposefully because I find that relationships are so hard to maintain as it is and putting it on social media really invites the whole world into your relationship when it probably isn't the best idea. So that's why I don't really post him and share so much detail um, about my relationship. Maybe down the road I will, but at this point, you know, it's just, it's just us and it's just us trying to like work through things and, you know, take those next steps in our relationship in the most healthy way possible. And sometimes it's better to just have that done privately. You don't always want to share every little step you make on the internet. Flirting with uploading some other content that you could consider spicier. Keep in mind, I try and keep this as much of a family channel as possible because I do upload resources. I want a whole variety of people to be able to watch and feel comfortable watching. One thing I have been um, dealing with that I want to touch on in this little get ready with me and I didn't go into much detail on this because um, I wanted to keep my last video that I touched on this about my 2022 affirmations and just keep it more of like a funny video but this is a very serious topic to me so to let you guys know what products I use my brow pencil of choice it is by NYX Cosmetics it is the micro brow pencil and it's in the shade espresso. Also, I'm gonna go around and just lightly trace around those um, brows with um, a little bit of concealer. I use the LA Girl Pro Conceal in the shade Pure Beige. But back to what I was saying here, something that's a very serious topic to me um, is colorism and racism, right? I, I say it in a funny, joking manner sometimes. And I would think that in 2022, we would have come a lot farther um, as far as what we tend to see as beautiful or our beauty standards, right? And I'm just going to get into it. I'm just going to tell you guys my raw thoughts on this. I find that being black is bastardized, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if there's a word for it. I think it's bastardization there it is of being black like people love to get a big butt get their lips bigger to tan themselves to you know do the wigs do the fake nails the gold jewelry all of it the stereotypical ratchet black girl was not something that was popular back when I was younger and that's you know a different generation I know you know generations raised on TikTok won't really understand this but back in the day like that was considered ghetto and trashy like no one wanted to be that black girl right now it's the popular thing everyone wants to have that look have the big butt have the curves that were once considered not attractive and not popular it just seems to me and this is going to sound very triggering that people love black people uh, and black women particularly, but when it comes to actually loving black women um, and black people, we tend to not do so. Working in the industry that I've been working in for so long, since I was in high school basically, I can really definitively say that we are not as advanced as we should be when it comes to you know, colorism and how we treat other races. For example, 
when people used to tell me that there's white clubs and black clubs, I used to be like, that doesn't exist. You know what I mean? Like, that's racist. Like, we, we would never do that as a people, actually have white and black clubs, but it actually exists, guys. And I'm telling you this, not to be like race baiting, playing the race card. It just is what it is, especially in the nightlife industry. Um, you hear stories, I think there was a story that came out with Cardi B going to a club, maybe in Miami, and they weren't admitting any colored girls, only um, a certain demographic. And they were turning away brown girls from the door saying they weren't letting any black girls in. And you know, Cardi B wasn't having it, and she made it a big thing, but that does happen. Like it does happen and it's sad. Question is why, right? Why is it that black is not profoundly beautiful like every other race in society? And I think that it comes to a point to me where it's just a lot of ignorance and people wanting to keep a certain look and they don't understand that everyone is equally beautiful. You either just stomach it and deal with it or you go somewhere else um, that is more palatable for you. But lately I've just stopped being so complacent with the way things have been and I guess you could say I've been rocking the boat a little bit, shaking the table. It's just, it's time to just stop being silent about these things because your silence is complicit it, it, you're being complicit when you're silent and you say nothing and you just agree that it's the status quo and it will always be the status quo. When no one says anything, nothing ever changes, okay? And when people I know are treated wrong, it bothers me. And when I'm treated wrong, it bothers me. And the only way any of this will change is if leadership management says, hey, race don't matter. Customers are going to be diverse, they're going to have preferences of their own, and it's, it's honestly up to that customer to decide what it is they are into. If they don't like a certain girl, trust me, they won't even give them the time of day, okay? And that leads me to another thing, and I'm just going to end this with the whole topic of, you know, white and black clubs. and. Honestly, I don't believe in that. I don't believe that clubs should be split like that. Um, it, it doesn't make sense. And I honestly believe clubs across the board would make a crap ton more money if they had more diversity, if they had more different options that could offer more to the table than just one vanilla taste, if you get what I'm saying. You go for any audition or you go to apply to an establishment and they will hire and I know this is going to sound very messed up, so if you don't want to hear this, click off now. They will hire the most crackhead looking woman, doesn't have their makeup on, out of shape, doesn't have their hair together, tatted all over the place in some cases if they are white or light, very light complexioned or white passing. But that same woman, if colored, if they won't be able to even pass an audition. They won't, they won't even make it through the door. They'll be too ghetto. Um, I've seen that I've had to have my makeup done perfect, have a certain outfit, dress a certain way, talk a certain way. Um, really just over, um, overdo it with trying to present myself perfectly to even be considered at a club where the, the average or subpar woman who is not of color will be hired instantly simply for just not being ethnic. Don't get me wrong, there are some clubs that don't care, they don't give a, excuse my language, give a shit um, about any of this. They'll hire whoever has some talent or they feel like will make money, which I think most clubs should be like that. You make your choice on where you're gonna work. It's a free country, but it is wrong. And I feel like the more we stand up and say something about it, we bring it up to our management and we kind of bring up these little injustices when we can, that's when change starts to happen. Because in this landscape right now, we have COVID, we have all types of shutdowns that we've been through, and 
all industries really need their best employees their best workers and I truly do think that this is the best time for people to stand up and actually be vocal because when people leave and those dollar signs leave as well it impacts that industry little by little so definitely make sure you're standing up for yourself guys I just wanted to get that out um, I'm gonna put my foundation on I use the Kat Von D locket foundation in the shade medium 62 personal life um i have been so stagnant for the last one or two years since covid i had so much planned for 2020 that i really just started um procrastinating and telling myself excuses for why i wasn't doing these things and the travel goals, all of that that I had planned, I do want to make that happen. And it's been something that's on my mind so much that, you know, we procrastinate so much of our lives that we just don't do the things we actually want to do. And we make excuses for why it's not important. It's not a priority. For me, travel is a priority. And, you know, making the money, the income to pay my bills and be able to live the lifestyle I want to live. Also, going to the gym, staying healthy, maintaining myself, meeting those fitness goals I have for myself. Those are all for me, full-time jobs. I don't do any of that stuff part-time. Otherwise, I'd feel like I'm half-assing, right? Like I'm not giving my all to those goals. I got to a point where I started to feel a little fatigued and I never really do. Sometimes I get like a little bit like meh, but I never feel like I'm stalling out. And I honestly felt like I was stalling out towards the end of 2021. I definitely felt, I started to second guess myself, which you should never ever do. But I saw myself doing that. One thing that helped me to get out of that funk is to really like bet on myself and basically turn my mindset into, okay, if I don't do this, I'm not gonna get anywhere. But if I bet on myself and bet that I can do it, then I actually have more motivation to do it. It's almost like when I say bet on yourself, imagine you have a friend that you are really close with and you bet, oh, I'm going to go to work and make $3,000. And then that friend tells you, no, you can't. I'll make $3,000. You won't make it. I promise you, you won't be able to do it. I'll make 4000 right? You're betting on yourself that you can make that 3000 It's almost like a, um, a goal, a bet that you actually can do it. That is what motivates me and that's what got me out of that funk of feeling like I can't, I'm overwhelmed, there's too much, can I do it, blah blah blah. You just have to know that you are capable and just show up every day. It seems so simple and we overcomplicate it but all it takes is just rolling out of bed and going. Easy to kind of falter sometimes, especially if you feel like you're overloading yourself, but definitely you just have to keep at it. Um, never give up, guys, because when you give up, that's when you are stopping your progress, stopping your growth. Quitters never win is so true. Quitters never will win. Honestly, I think it looks pretty good, but I'm going to add a little contour and a little highlight. I love the highlight in this chocolate bar palette. It's the one I use on my nose all the time. I don't really do cheek highlight anymore. I find that it looks a little bit like chalky and like, I don't know, I just don't like it. Champagne Truffle. I don't know if they actually sell this as a single highlighter. If they did, I would just literally buy it because it is the perfect highlight for my complexion. So if you just see, it just, I don't know, it just creates like that little effect I don't know how to describe it but it just makes your makes my complexion at least look kind of like glass it's kind of where I've been I'm just maintaining making sure that I'm starting off the year right starting off with all my stuff written down here but I write everything down if you don't have a journal y'all like this has literally saved my life just having a planner and writing down all my goals for the year. So when I use the contour, my face is this palette by Kat Von D as well. This is the shade and light contour palette. Take the darkest shade slightly on a Real Techniques brush. I always blend upward, just like that. You can definitely stop here. I don't do anything else with my face. Um, you can add blush. I'm not gonna do that today because 
I have a plum wig on right now and I find that blush would just kind of clash with that as far as colors on my face. If I do use blush, I use this blushed neutrals palette. It's by BH Cosmetics. I use the middle shade the most. I find that it's actually perfect for my complexion. If you wanted to, you could go in with that same concealer you use for around your brows and just go right underneath your eyes to brighten it up, beat it with a beauty blender, add some powder to set it, and that would be good to cover any dark eye circles. Today, I'm not gonna do that, but that's what I would do if I was gonna conceal my face. But today, all I'm gonna do is add a lash. Take an eyeliner, this is just from the beauty supply store. Doesn't really have a brand to it. Um, just any old liner. And then you're gonna take it, do like a baby wing, like this. The lashes I use are actually by a local business that has all types of beauty products from wigs to lashes to bonnets to uh, clip and hair extensions. You name it, they have it. I'll link it right here. They are local and follow them on Instagram as well. They are where I get all of my lashes. I actually love beauty supply lashes because they're just a bit more like dramatic and they just give more of like an effect that I like. These are the Moonstone ones. They're like a mink lash and they're just really, really beautiful. On, and they're the ones I'm gonna be wearing for today. All right, so lastly, I'm going to add a black opal liquid lipstick. I love this liquid lipstick. This is my favorite kind of mauve neutral lip. It is in the shade Chic Mauve. Uh, just take a little bit on my lips. Makeup that is very simple, very basic. Anyone could do this. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one. As always, be well, be safe, and take care, guys.